and we are back here at we're back here at Centennial College and now we have the men's to finish off this double header they face the Algonquin Wolves the Centennial men are perfect at home and recently won yesterday against Lycite the starting lineups for your Colts are Hasum Shallow, Coven Armstrong, Tayshawn Crawford, Kalaya Williams, and Ambrosio and Dongala. For the Algonquin Wolves, the starting lineup is Nathan Garcia, Carter Normand, Topaz Canna, Nick Chich Chicholini and Ted Braden and winning the tip is the Colts we're going to continue their home cooking as you mentioned they're 2-0 on the season here at Progress Campus and right away they go up for two they miss the tip almost goes in by Williams the Wolves, meanwhile, coming off a loss last night at George Brown campus on their GTA road trip here. And off the top, the Colts force a turnover. That's Kana throwing the ball out of play. Yeah, you can see in the corner there, Kovan Armstrong, the Colts' leading scorer, averaging 21.3 points per game, giving the ball to the lead ball handler, Hussam Shallow. Williams with the pump fake on the elbow. Gets fouled there. Looks like that shooting. No. And with this shooting, Williams will be going to the line. Getting a quick pep talk from Coach Michael Jackman over there before he heads to the line here. And we are on the board, the Colts with the first points of the game. Williams takes literally a second and then throws up his free throws. Everybody has their different routines when they're at the charity stripe. Looks like the ball will stay with the Wolves. One thing to note here early on is a little bit of a size difference between these two teams. The Colts on the smaller side. Meanwhile, Algonqu Algonquin excuse me, has Ted Braden there in the middle, number nine. And that is a three-pointer. And it is knocked down by Carter Norman. A little stop and start action. Couple Colts tumble. The Wolves have numbers. Let's see if they take advantage. And they do just that. Cicciolini giving the Wolves a four point lead. Yeah, the Wolves coming out with some energy here to start. You can hear their bench chanting defense. Let's see if the Colts can respond to this early four point deficit they have. And Dongla with the floater, also oh sweet. Looking like Tony Parker with that float game. The Colts back into their 2 2 1 zone press that they'll run after makes. We saw it work really well last night against La Cite, forcing that Coyotes offense to throw the ball over their defense, continuously turning it over in the Colts' win. A three by Kana off the glass, doesn't make it. And Dongola not scared to go in the paint, just misses there. As you mentioned, Zach, that press and the Colts capitalize with an Armstrong layup. And one thing about Full court presses. They get you out your comfort zone. K 
Santana looking for another outside shot. Misses that one. All tied up here. A little bit of an offensive discrepancy coming into the game between the two teams. The Colts averaging 80 points per game while the Wolves averaging just 62. So it'll be interesting to see what might be that outside shooting that the Wolves use to kind of make up for that. And Kana finally makes one from beyond the arc. Armstrong will shoot it. And Dongola very active on the boards. For three from the corner. Knocked down by Crawford. Tayshawn Crawford is the definition of a sharp shooter from deep. He's shooting 56% from three on the season so far. That's like Steve Kerr when he used to play. Just lights out from behind the three-point line. Money ball. Crawford is the second leading scorer on the Colts, averaging 13.5 per game. So he's been a nice number two to Kovan's number one. Kovan with the rock, that gets blocked, but he's gonna get the ball back. And he gets fouled, he will head to the line. Kovan could do a little bit of everything, get into the paint, and he can shoot from the outside. The Brampton native makes, looks to make his first free throw of the game. Yeah, he definitely does make his mark all over the point, even all over the court, excuse me, and even had nine rebounds last night in the win, so, you know, as I'm sure we'll see, he also makes his mark defensively. He is the Colts' focal point, I would say. Yeah, you mentioned 19-9 last night for Armstrong, one rebound shy of a double-double. You know, the Wolves here with Braden 6-9 and... Ciccolini, 6'8". How do you think the Colts overcome that kind of size difference inside that the Wolves obviously I think you just have. have to make them work. You have to make them work. Don't let them get comfortable in the paint. Try to stretch them, bring them outside. And for that to happen, you have to make some outside jump shots for them to want to come outside. Definitely know the Colts can do that with Armstrong and definitely with McAlalad when he comes into the game. Yeah, the Colts three-point shooting last night was on fire. Kovan Armstrong making three. Indungala made two last night, and McAlad had four of his own. So, obviously a focal point of their high-powered offense is the three ball. Garcia heading to the paint. And there he is. And Dongola, little up and under, doesn't convert it. Garcia, he finds his man in the corner, and that's Norman. The Colts are forced to call an early timeout here in Scarborough at the Progress Campus. The Wolves have shown that they can hit the three ball. Yeah, definitely doing that early so far tonight. They're only a, they've only shot 20% from three on the season. So obviously getting off to a great start from deep here. They, you know, maybe led by Carter Norman himself there, who's been solid for the Wolves this season. He's already got six points here tonight. Uh, just averaging seven on the year on 25% from deep. So we'll see if he keeps on continuing to, to knock him down today. And last night, the Colts were victorious against La Cite. And the player with a game-high 21 points was Jacob McLeod. Do you feel like he comes in now or doesn't seem like it? I'm sure eventually he will come in. Yeah, I'm sure he'll come in eventually. He's definitely, uh, Instant you know, offense. if there was a sixth man of the year award, he's got to be right there. The Colts started out a little bit slow last night against the Coyotes, and he came in and kind of gave them that instant spark of offense, especially with his outside shooting. So I'm sure we'll see him in no time here after his great game last night. 
Outstanding game by McLellad. And Armstrong is bringing the ball up the floor. Looks like we have a foul off the ball on the Wolves. Norman just trying to hold on to Coban as he's going around those screens. And a careless turnover there by the Colts over and back. The Wolves will get possession now. The and Wolves, sorry, I was just going to say, the Wolves just one and three so far this season. They had a, a win over St. Lawrence early, but also have losses against George Brown, Loyalist, and Seneca. Entering the game for the first time is Kendall Valerie for the Algonquin Wolves. And that's Ted Braden getting two. Another foul here on the Wolves. On Nathan Garcia there. Here comes McElalad coming in for Williams. And I spoke with McElalad yesterday after the game, and he said he is totally fine with coming off the bench. He is willing to do anything that helps the team. You got to love that mentality. Sometimes coming off the bench as a, as a heat check guy is, is not an issue. You know, you come into the game, you give your team an offensive spark. Seems like a perfect role for Mackle allowed with this group. And getting into the lane is Garcia. And he creates a foul. He will head to the charity stripe. Back to Mackle allowed. I can remember uh, back in the... OKC Young days when they had Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. James Harden had no problem coming off the bench, and he was so lethal in his role. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, speaking of Russell Westbrook, he's coming off the bench now. He seems to be doing thriving in that role. So yep. As you're going to play the same amount of minutes anyways. It's just Regardless, and you're going to end the ball games. Exactly. That's it's what they say. It's about how you finish, not how you start. Couldn't have said it any better, Zach. McLeod with the ball. And he's walking, and Dongle walks there, didn't have his feet set, probably thinking about the move he was gonna make before he got the ball, and once he got the ball, he was ready onto that move. Yeah, Algonquin seems in control early on here. Those early bombs from outside seems to open up, have opened up the paint a little bit for them. They've gotten a couple layups in a row here. And CJ Galaza has entered the ball game for the Wolves. The ball just goes out of play. Wolves will get possession. One thing the Colts don't want to have this ball game get out of hand. They're already trailing by eight. I think they still need to run their offense but it's the turnovers. Yeah, just a couple careless ones, you know, some travel, stepping out of bounds, not catching the ball. As much as we talked about them turning over the Coyotes last night, they did turn the ball over quite a bit themselves, so taking care of the Rock, I'm sure, was a point of emphasis for Coach Jackman coming into this one. Brady with the ball at the top. He finds Galaza. Back to Galiza, he misses. Good ball movement by the Colts. And there they go. That's the offense that you're looking for if you're Centennial. Very nicely done. Great take by Crawford. Four, three. Doesn't make it, that's Galaza with the shot. He is Algonquin's second leading scorer, averaging 11.3 points per game. Also grabbing 9.8 boards and 
did it averaging just under four assists and under three steals. So as much as we talk about McElalad being the Colts' spark off the bench, he seems to be the same thing for the Wolves here. And going to the line now will be Normad. And Dongola had his hands up, but still gets called for the blocking foul. I don't think Coach Jackman is too thrilled about that call. Seemed like a respectful conversation. Ended with a thumbs up in between <laughs> Coach Jackman and the referee there. Yeah, one thing you don't want to get is technicals, especially early in a ball game. No, lose yourself a couple calls. You don't want to. Don't want to do that early. Definitely living on the edge if you do that. And Normad with his second free throw swishes it, putting the Wolves back up by eight. Jonah Cantor checking in for Ted Braden here. The Wolves' size now off the floor, so both Braden and Ciccolini on the bench right now. We'll see if the Colts adjust how they're playing with those two off the floor. Armstrong looking for the four-point play, just misses it. But it seems like he's going to go to the line for three. Frustrated he couldn't get that shot. And again, Zach, you want your best players to get going. And the easiest way for that is seeing the ball go through the net from the free throw line. Absolutely, three shots for Kovon here to get his range a little bit here tonight and maybe that'll help him get himself going offensively. He makes the first two. And another thing about getting three points from the free throw line is the clock is stopped. Absolutely, helps every time you're down to get to the line. Valerie hounded by close defenders. Tough call there, but they called the block. The Wolves are not in the bonus just yet. Ball will be side out. Valerie, three-point is up, missed by the Colts, missed by the Wolves, sorry. That was Imad Ruhamian Dekwe with the, the three there. Just getting in and firing off threes. That's what you got to do sometimes, get, you, get yourself into the game. And that's one thing about Makalad. He is not afraid of getting into the paint. He mentioned to me that one thing he loves is getting his teammates involved and he knows if he attacks the paint, he's going to attract defenders and then he could kick it out to his shooters. Yeah, absolutely. We saw that along with his uh, 21 last night. He had three assists. So he's really good coming, coming around those screens and then kind of reading the defense, whether he needs to attack to the rim, pull up, or dish out to his teammates. So. And that's something you don't see every day. He misses both free throws. Definitely slow-paced first quarter. A lot of fouls. I think both teams are still trying to get a feel for each other. Absolutely, and uh, both obviously having played last night, maybe a little bit tired legs coming into this one. Ball is side out for the Colts, and they will try to trim this lead. The Wolves coming out full court now. And the press works as the ball goes off of the thigh. 
good idea there on the lead bounce pass. Just couldn't get it into that tight window. The bounce pass is the best pass, but it's also the most difficult pass to execute. Exactly. Another three for the Wolves. It's missed by a Saint. Makala, is that a carry? It's looking like a carry by Jacob Makala. Yeah, the Colts turnovers here early, seven of them so far. Maybe the difference in this one right now. Looks like they might slow it down for a two for one. Perhaps, let's see. And it seems like the Wolves are going for it right away. Doesn't seem like they're going for the last shot. Ruham Yandekwe steps out of bounds there. Colts ball, I'm sure now they'll be looking for the last shot here. Wolves still in that full court pressure. No need for the Colts to rush their offense here. Shalo misfires there. Trying to go for the buzzer beater is Galaza. He misses it. The Colts trail by five points to the Algonquin Wolves. Algonquin with 19, Colts with 14. We will come back to you for the second quarter momentarily. Back here on Progress Campus, here in Scarborough, the Centennial Colts, fresh off their win last night against La Cite, look to keep their home record perfect. They are down by five to the Algonquin Wolves. Yeah, defending the home gym, always important. And right away, Algonquin turns it over. Makalad with the ball. Looks like walking, and he walked there. That's a few turnovers for the Colts, and those can easily be points they'd be putting up. Yeah, eight turnovers early on for the Colts here given three possessions away. 
Yassint on the glass. That's two offensive rebounds back to back. He doesn't make the basket, but he heads to the line for two. Makes the first one as the Colts players get into the free throw positions. And Yacint makes both to put the Wolves up by seven. Yeah, the Wolves, not traditionally a strong free throw shooting team. They're shooting below 50% on the season. So early on here, shooting 66%. And straight to the rim. Putting the Wolves up by nine. This is their largest lead of the game. Yeah, big offensive possession here from the Colts. Kind of try to stop the bleeding here. That left-handed layup was by Ruham Yandekwe. Three-pointer is up. No good, but the offensive rebound goes to the Colts. A little um, overthrow there. They had numbers. It was a two-on-one. Ball just went out of play. And the Wolves will get possession. Galaza bringing the ball up the floor. The Wolves look to extend their lead to double digits. Ted Braden back on the floor here for the Wolves. He's their leading scorer so far this season. Galaza for three. No good. Colts are running. And again, another turnover for the Colts. I'm sure Coach Jackman is going to have words for his ball club at halftime. Yeah, you know, and they haven't even been turning over the ball, like uh, giving it to the Wolves. They've just been throwing it out of bounds, traveling, it's, not being able to it, catch it. The turnovers have nothing to do with the Algonquin Wolves defense. And the Algonquin Wolves turning it over. A little back and forth. Mid-range jumper, no good. And it's a foul there. Heading to the line will be Kalia Williams. His second trip to the line today. He went one for two the first time. Kalia Williams puts up the first one, makes his first free throw. You know, it's tough when you're struggling offensively to kind of keep up your defensive intensity, but I feel like the Colts have been doing a pretty solid job of staying engaged on defense despite their struggles offensively so far. As much as the Colts are turning the ball over, the Wolves are doing the exact same. Back in the ball game is Garcia. He had five assists in the first quarter. Straight dimes. And another three is made by Yacint. Ten point ball game. And Shao with the three almost looked like he didn't want to shoot that. It goes up and in. That was a few feet from behind the line as well. His feet weren't even fully set there. And no. Shalo grabs the board. Let's see if he could get going here. And that was looking like a four point play. The ref was right there. Back to back threes for Shalo. That's and big for the Colts. And look at the closeout by Shalo. McLeod from one side to the other side in the bottom of the net. That's what he does. What a great finish. 
And just like that, it's only a two-point game. The Colts are catching some steam. The momentum is going their way. Three in the key there on Braden. Yeah, shallow back-to-back -back three there. Hey, he's only been a 30% free throw or three-point shooter on the season. So a couple makes back-to-back. -back. Maybe he's going to get hot in this one. And as we mentioned, when this game was going the Wolves' way, they were up by 10, they were up by 9. That was because of the three ball. And look at that. The Colts get two straight threes from shallow. And just like that, they're back in this game. Yeah, those are two big shots for him. You know, like I said, maybe not traditionally the, the three-point shooter of this squad. He's, you know, leading the team in assists with five per game. But... Big players step up in big moments, and we've seen Shallow kind of be a, a great secondary scorer for this Colt squad led by Armstrong and Crawford. And that's what threes do. Threes get your team going. He hit the two straight threes, and then he closed out for a three-point attempt by a Wolves player. They got the rebound, and you seen Maclellad finally get on the board with a nifty layup. It's infectious. It is. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about the not letting your offensive struggles affect your defense, but, you know, sometimes the offense success can really help your defense as well, and then you turn it back and you get some stops and it helps you get scores. The Colts will look to tie up the ball game or even take the lead with a three on this possession. Shallow at the top of the key. He has a mismatch. That's a big man on him. For three, and Crawford misfires just a bit short there. Cano's back in the ball game. He's not afraid to let it fly, but letting it fly is Cantor. He misses there. Crawford getting up the floor. Nice little hesitation. Loses possession. Another turnover. Getting it back there. And Dongola. And the Wolves have numbers two on one. And that is great defense by Shallow. Shallow has been balling in this second quarter. Great verticality there. We've seen the Colts foul at the rim a couple times so far today. And that was just a great defensive effort to avoid the foul. Colts got bailed out there. Williams was looking for somebody in the corner. Nobody was there. Coach Jackman is having a word with him. Probably wants him to hold the ball and not get rid of it so quickly. Maybe just a, a look to see if somebody's there or headed there before you, before you throw the pass. Shallow with the inbounds. Finds Maclalad. Maclalad. Gets the pick, puts up the outside jumper, in and out. Kano with the ball behind his back. Kano with the fancy moves. And that is a nice take by Garcia. Shows no fear there. And a technical foul on Garcia. He had something to say after that layup. And he is getting an earful from coach Trevor Costello, who's in his 26th year of coaching. Pretty experienced coaching staff. The assistant coach, Jim Langis, is in his 21st year. It always helps to have experience on the bench. That was a great finish by Garcia. Yep. Obviously through the contest of Crawford there. And we have a time out. We will get straight back to you very shortly.
We're back here at Centennial College here in Scarborough at the Progress Campus. Armstrong back in the game for the Colts. The Colts are down by three to the Algonquin Wolves. Shallow with another three. Shallow is on fire. That's his third three in the quarter. He is putting up some deep shots here. And Andongla with the steal, trying to give the Colts the lead now. Oh, he's definitely shooting this. He goes to the paint, and that is what you can do once your outside shooting game is working for you. The defenders are going to bite, and now you can go straight to the paint. Shallow will go to the line for two. Yeah, we mentioned earlier Shallow struggling so far this season from deep. You know, he didn't shoot any last night. He went 3 for 10 in their, their loss against Georgian a week ago. But really, finding his range tonight, so. And the Colts have taken the lead. They're up by one. Rebound there by Cantor. Galaza trying to shake Shallow, does just that and makes the basket. Nice move there by Galaza. Shallow shown he has the moves too, and he has the left-handed finish. Colts back up. Shallow with the reach in there. Braden is going to head to the line. Shallow with 14 points here early on. He's really been carrying the Colts offense so far. Attacking the rim, making some threes. Here now, Ted Braden getting himself to the line. Nick Ciccolini checking back in. You have to imagine the Wolves are going to kind of go back to that size advantage that they have with that twin towers pair that they have and Braden makes both free throws shallow not the quickest but definitely gets to his spots You gotta love the coach in there by Coach Jackman. He knows his players don't have to be at the free throw line. So having a word with them, I'm sure he wants his Colts to finish off this first half strong. Yeah, they've really responded well so far after going down by five in the first quarter, getting themselves back into a lead now by the two free throws from Williams there. For three, that's Normand. Last touch went off the fingertips of Williams. Normand made a couple of those early, but hasn't been able to find his range again since. Colts look like they're changing up their press a little bit. Will it be something to watch once we get back in the second half? It's gonna be stop to. It's gonna be hard to stop Braden when he's that deep. Hard to stop six nine. Shallow tries, Shallow gets a call. He's gonna stay on the ground for a bit. He'll go to the line with the Colts in the bonus here. Shallow's gonna take his time. Not sure if he has that pad in on the, on the hip. The court mopping ever so important. Last night we saw a few players slipping all over the place, a wet floor. Not sure exactly what was going on last night, but. Couple of wipeouts, and again, once you're going in these tough battles with teams that are so evenly matched, a lot of perspiration on the floor. It's 
surprising to see Shallow miss that first one. But he ties up the ball game at 34. Crawford will check in for Shallow here. Shallow probably just needs some ice. Seems like he's going to get worked on there. More than likely, he'll come back for the second half. Looks like the Colts changed their 2-2-1 into a 1-2-2, so a little flip of the court, maybe. And Cano with the three, Braden. Almost looks like a charge. He got the call. Offense. That is a charge. He lowered the shoulder. That will go to the Colts. I was going to say, the Wolves have been doing a good job of dealing with that press. It seems like whenever Centennial gets it truly set up that the Wolves work the ball to a, a shooter in the corner over there. And Galaza, whether it's McLeod or Shallow bringing the ball up for the Colts, Galaza is right there with them. Yeah, he's been... Pretty solid defensively so far today, really getting in the face of the Colts ball handlers. Colts back on top. Crawford hits the first free throw. And he hits the second, even with the player inadvertently running in front of him. Look at the defense by McLeod. And that is what you want as a Colt. You want Braden to be bringing the ball up the floor. And he throws it out of play. Good press there. McLeod. Absolutely. You force the reverse out of the... Get the ball out of Galaz's hands into Braden, who I'm sure can handle the ball. But obviously, if you're... The Wolves, you want Galaza bringing it up for you and then make Braden make that decision to try and throw the ball over top and just can't catch it, losing it out of bounds. And again, it's going back and forth with the turnovers and it almost seems like this game is going to be won from the line and from beyond the arc. Very important. And the Colts... They definitely want to capitalize on the struggles that the Wolves are having from the line this season. Only 49.4% from the line. 75% here tonight, though, so obviously helping them kind of get in this game. You know, you mentioned the outside shooting. When the, the Wolves broke out to that early lead, it was kind of sparked by a couple of threes by Normand and Canna. And, you know, the Colts have kind of reversed their fortunes with Shallow making some shots from deep and getting to the rim. So it will be interesting to see who gets hot in the second half from Bayard and the Arc and how much that plays into who wins this game. And McLeod will play the ball in to Armstrong. And that is Steps. Armstrong's pivot foot just slid there. And the Wolves will have possession. Let's see if they've made an adjustment here out of that timeout to deal with this press. And if I'm a Colt, with all this stoppage here on the side, I would really get up on Galaza, but they did not. And again, Braden with the ball. Good pass by Kana to Norman. Norman misses the three-pointer. Not scared to shoot it is Crawford. 136 left in the first half. Colts up by two. Looks like they're trying to set Braden up. Oh. And it's La Chapelle who ends up taking it to the rim there. Looked like they were trying to set up Braden inside for a mismatch, but. LeChapel just taking it all the way to the rim by himself. Active hands by Kana. Kana with the no-look pass. Gets pinned by Crawford. 
Armstrong for three. Just a bit short. Armstrong behind the back. And Coach Jackman has his Colts reset. No need to rush anything. Want to get the right possession. Want to get the right shot. McAlad enters the paint. And Endegala just misses that three-pointer. Dangerous pass, but it gets through. And Braden is going to clean that up all day. That size difference is tough to deal with. He's got 12 already here in the first half. Shot clock is off. Armstrong with the ball. Shakes his first defender. Goes back. Goes back into the paint. Look at the finish by Armstrong. And Colts have a chance to get the last shot before half. Seems like the Colts want a little bit of time put back on the clock. With point four left, won't be able to bring the ball down. Literally just gonna have to, as soon as it touches your fingertips, it has to go up. It looked like a couple seconds did run off there once the refs blew the whistle, but. Maybe a lob, maybe they'll have to do a lob and they do the lob. And it's a buzzer beater, McAlalad to Armstrong, and that is how you finish a first half. Colts up by two, 40 to 38. Wow, what a play. You think if you're Algonquin, you have the size inside, you can just reject anything thrown at the rim, but Armstrong getting up. Look at the vert on Armstrong, and he is one of the leaders of this Colts team. McAlalad showed yesterday he is one of the leaders also. You want your two best players getting a touch on the ball, and that is what they did. The Colts really came back in this second quarter. What did you like the most from them in this comeback? Yeah, I think you got to highlight Hussam Shallow's outside shooting, sparking them coming back. He went four of four from three in the first half. The Colts obviously were down by five heading into that second quarter, and he almost single-handedly got them back into the game with his outside shooting. Shallow with a great quarter there, and he was getting after it defensively also. We are going to come back to you for the second half. This is Colts basketball.
we are back here in Scarborough at Centennial College. And what a way for the Colts to end that first half. A lob from McLeod to Armstrong to put them in the lead. With 0 0.4 seconds left, a huge play. Only, their only option, real, realistically. Yep. And Shallow back to work with the left. Gets stuck on the rim, but he grabs his grabs the board, but the ball finds Garcia. That is a great take by him. Froze and Gondola, and we are knotted up at 40. What are you looking for here in the second half to see kind of changes from either side? Yeah, well, for the Colts, I'm going to talk about the Colts specifically. The Colts just need to cut down the turnovers and literally any shot is a good shot because you can get offensive rebounds. They're leaving a lot of points, a lot of field goal attempts off of the score sheet. So I'm sure Coach Jackman had a talk with them about that. And also in the paint, try to mix it up with Braden, front him at times, and then sometimes when he gets the ball in the post, just add a couple more numbers. And their single coverage, he's going to take advantage of that all day. He gets the end one. Yeah, an offensive board and the easy turn into the layup there. I think you're right on point with talking about Braden and his size. going to be a huge factor here in the second half. He had 12 in the first half. So obviously going to be interesting to see how the Colts decide to defend him in this second half. And Armstrong bringing the ball up the floor. Going straight to the cup. Armstrong with two points there. Armstrong had a huge third quarter in the Colts win yesterday. He Looking like a charge there, and it is a charge. Williams in the right position. Great start for him. He hit that little jumper, and now... Takes a charge. Big start for Williams. But as I was saying, Armstrong yesterday, 10 points by himself in the third quarter, had a huge impact on the Colts. You know, the game was tight at half, and they were really able to gain some separation in that third quarter behind Armstrong. And look at Armstrong coming up the court with a little pep in his step. Shallow going to use the screen. Good pass by Armstrong to Andongala. Armstrong's everywhere. Shallow for three. That's his first miss from behind the arc in this game. He took a little knock just before halftime, but I don't know about you, Zach. He looks totally fine to me. Yeah, I'd say he looks he looks good out there, obviously. You know, tough to shoot 100% from three every game. So Even Steph Curry can't do that. Exactly. Four for five is, is an all right percentage as well. Definitely more than all right. 80% from three. Whew. Like we talked about before the break, though, the three-point shooting has been a factor in both teams going on runs. So we'll see who can maybe get a little bit of momentum from three here to end the the game I guess and that's steps Kana started the first half drained a couple threes I'm sure he was looking to shoot there just couldn't make up his mind and walked yeah after hitting three threes in the first five minutes or so of the first quarter that's great defense by Normand. He forces the out of bounds by Armstrong. Since that point, the Wolves have just hit one three. So great defense, though. Obviously, the defense is going to be a big factor here in the second half. Garcia with the rock. Garcia's gonna have to shoot it. What a pass by Garcia. 
That is what you call using up all the clock and getting the best shot. Braden that, nails the three. That was Ted Braden's first three-point attempt of the season, and of course it's going to find the bottom. Crawford goes right at Braden. Good spin move by Garcia. And this is the ball movement. If you're the Wolves, you want to see more of. You don't want the ball to be in one player's hands for an entire possession. You want them to move it around. It looked good there, but... Yeah, they called a three, and the key there seemed maybe a little bit quick on the count. Very quick but there. Nevertheless, that was the call. Mismatch here. Shallow takes advantage of it. Just misses the layup. You could hear the frustration from Shallow there. He wants that one back. Although Braden got beat off the dribble, he made up for it by getting back in, just putting his hands up. And if Braden puts his hands up, it's going to disrupt many people. I was going to say, it doesn't matter if he gets beat. Him just being there with his size makes it a tough layup for anybody. Garcia to Normand. Corner three, in and out. Another three pops out. They are putting them up this quarter. Armstrong brings the ball back out. You could hear the Wolves bench. They're loving the defense from their team. But it doesn't matter how loud they are. That is money in the bank for Yusuf. Nice mid-range game right there. Great shot for him. Coming off the spin with the shot clock winding down to tie the game. Norman puts it up. How sweet is that shot? Silky smooth off the dribble handoff there. Armstrong bringing the ball up. Almost lost his dribble there. The Wolves perimeter defense really picking up here. And one thing I do got to say about both clubs this half, Zach, is you're not seeing those turnovers as much. No, I'm sure it was a point of emphasis for both clubs at, at halftime. We got to take care of the ball. A huge swat down there at the Colts end by Yusuf. One thing the Colts do really well, despite being a smaller team, is they guard the rim fairly well. Obviously, you don't have a player above 6'5", and you know Armstrong is that player at 6'5", and he's mostly on the perimeter, but they do a great job of making it tough for teams at the rim despite lacking that, that size. And they have a pretty athletic group, so they're not going to back down from any challenge. They always have extra bodies there too. That just goes to show probably Coach Jackman really making sure his club is conditioned properly. You have to, you have to give credit where credit is due. The yeah, absolutely. The conditioning big too. They only run an eight-man rotation, so obviously getting up and down the floor for 40 minutes is, is quite a task when you're just going with eight guys. Yep, and the Wolves lead in so far here in the third quarter. They're up by two points, 48 to 46. <laughs> Cicciolini has been in the game for the Wolves. Yeah, just taking a look at the Wolves, a few of their guys in foul trouble with three already. Ciccolini, one of those, Garcia the other, and Norman. So a few key Wolves early with three fouls. Something to keep an eye on as we get into the latter stages of this game. Passing the ball around the perimeter is the Colts. The Wolves go into a 2-3 now. 
dangerous play there, although it did seem like Shallow got the ball first, but the referee calls a foul on Shallow and he seems to be limping again. You have to admire his hustle going to the ground, putting his body on the line. Yeah, once you turn the ball over, you're obviously in that range where you want to go get the ball and make up for the, for the mistake. Yep, if you lose it, get it back. Garcia looking aggressive this second half. A jump ball is called. But I think the other... Calling the foul or... Well, regardless, the possession arrow is with the Wolves. I think they'll stick with the jump ball. No foul reported to the the scorer's table. Garcia attacking the lane. Good jump cut there. Some good ball movement. Getting that shot up just in time. Ruham Yandekwe with the two. Colts want to keep this closest out for, but you know how easily these games can get away. Absolutely. Armstrong is not having any of that. He puts in two of his own. What a dime there. Galiza with the dime to Braden. Colts maybe get a little lucky with that one rolling out. Braden coming right down the lane. Not a lucky roll for the Wolves big man there. Braden misses the first, and you see Coach Jackman having a chat with his Colt players. And he swishes home the second, putting the Wolves up by three. In and out by Shallow. He's missed his last couple threes now. And as you mentioned, Zach, just tenacious defense, this time by Yusuf, although he has given up a lot of size, just in the right position, holding his ground. Absolutely, all about that strong defensive positioning, keeping yourself between Braden and the rim. That looked like it went down, it just came out. Not, not some lucky rolls going on here. It's gonna be hard to stop Braden when he's that deep. He's gonna get the rebound and put it up. It's, it's, it's too difficult if he's that deep. There, probably nobody in the NCAA are gonna have a fun time dealing with him once he has multiple chances at putting the put back in. No, he gets the end one. He's already got a double-double here today. That was his 11th rebound, obviously already in double-digit points, so the Colts have got to find a way to box him out and not let him get those extra opportunities. Dangerous pass there by Yusuf. And how many in and outs is that by the Colts? Luck is not on their side this second half. Just one of those days offensively. Just can't get anything to draw. One thing you do have to give credit to the Wolves. They are moving the ball nicely. Great but box out by Yusuf there. Keeping Braden off the boards. Big adjustment from last possession. And the foul. That's Armstrong going straight to the cup. What a pass by Makalalad. Armstrong picking it up here in the third quarter once again. Sometimes you got to lean on your best players to score the rock when you're going down like this. Nice follow through and he gets his team 
a bit closer. He's got 17 now. Open shot by Ru Ruham Yandekwe. He misfires from three. Good hesitation there from Yusuf. Gets Garcia in his space and then a foul there. Hopefully Garcia's all right. A big collision between the two there. Wolves may call a timeout if he stays on the ground a bit longer, but you gotta love the Colts getting into a huddle, having a chat. Is it side out? It's it looking is. like it is side out. Almost seemed like that was a shooting. Almost seem like they're indicating to shoot free throws, but the Colts will take the possession and shallow. Even though he looks like he's a bit beat up, he makes the floater. Yeah, he's been all over the place, scoring from inside and out here today. Good pass. Good pass by Braden, but his team couldn't convert. And Makalalad with another dime going to the stripe will be the Colts. That was a great pass. Right to Crawford on the bounce, just Normand not going to let Crawford get away with the easy layup there. Tayshawn Crawford shooting two, makes the first. Colts take the lead now, 54-53. And I'm going to harp on it again. You see after every and before every free throw, sorry, the Colts players just huddle together, and communication is so key, especially when a game is this close. Absolutely. Everybody being on the same page is huge when you're fighting to win a game like this. Gallas off for three. And they are not hidden from three in this half. Once a bounce pass is converted, it looks so beautiful. And that bounce pass was straight to McLeod. And he puts it in with the left hand. That's his second crazy layup of the day. Getting that one to go. Putting the Colts up by four. And you see where Braden is. I think the Colts are totally fine with Braden being that far out the paint. Absolutely. And the Colts get possession. If Braden is behind the three point line, I think you gotta live with that. Obviously he made that three earlier, but that was his first attempt of the year, so. Might be his only attempt of the year. You never know, he made it though, so maybe the, the Wolves will draw that play up a little bit more. Let's see what the Colts have here. They're going to take the last shot of this third quarter. I imagine Kovan might be that guy here. Kovan to shallow for three. And that is back to back buzzer beaters for the Colts. Putting them up by seven. Going into the fourth quarter feeling really good. Who Sam Shallow, 19 points, five threes made tonight. He is showing up for his team. This is Colts basketball. Colts are up by seven, and we will be back to you very shortly.
We are back here in Scarborough at Centennial College and Centennial enter this fourth quarter up by seven and Armstrong goes right into the paint. Looks like he walked there. A great end to the quarter there for the Colts. Things were pretty tight and now they grow that lead to seven. After a great finish and another three from who Sam Shallow. And the press, you got to love the hustle by Yusuf. He gets held up by a Colts fan. That's what you want to see. I'm sure that's what Coach Jackman was preaching at the break. Absolutely. All about that effort. All about that defense here to keep this lead. And the three ball has not been going down for the Wolves. Yes, you could say that's on them, but the Colts have been contesting. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we mentioned early on the Wolves made three threes in the first quarter and have been just made two cents. So, you know, the Colts forcing them outside despite the Wolves having uh, some success inside with Ted Braden. And look at Armstrong get into the ball before Braden. And Shallow, although he's taken a couple knocks this game, he looks just fine getting up and down the floor. One thing that I love about Shallow, he always wants the ball. Yeah, he's got a season high here so far tonight with 19. Straight to the cup. And I don't believe the refs will tell me this is not two. He's definitely going to the line here. I believe he did signal two shots, so shallow a chance to extend that season high. He's got 19 so far. Chance for two more. Shallow at the stripe. And he gets the first. Putting the Colts up by eight. Yeah, earlier today in the women's game, the Wolves were up on the Colts, and you said the Colts couldn't allow. Looks like Shallow is over the line there, but earlier today, the Colts were trailing by around six, and you said that they couldn't allow it to get to 10. Do you think it's a similar case here? I think it's the exact same case here. And the Colts are looking to make that lead 10. Shallow just has the ball go off his fingertips there. I do feel like that. Yes, Zach. If this game gets to 10, it can get carried away. And the Colts will be very confident if it gets to a double-digit lead. Because they're a team at home that plays so well. Hard to see them let a lead like that go, especially with the momentum they are playing with right now. First half a little shaky, but they came out of the break on fire. Yeah, absolutely. Like we talked about early, the turnovers for the Colts, a little bit of sloppy basketball in the opening quarter. They had nine or ten turnovers in that first quarter, and now they're sitting at 14 for the game, so they've really taken care of the ball, and I think that's been a huge difference in them being able to get this lead here. And the thing about the Colts, they're still going with the press, and I am a fan of it. Just getting the Wolves out of their comfort zone, frustrating them a lot. Yeah, we the Wolves, yeah, they dealt well with it early, but it seems like as the game has gone on, they've struggled a little bit more with it. Galaza bringing the ball up the floor. Valerie for three. It's just not going down for the Wolves. Yeah, they keep putting them up, but haven't been getting them to go. And I, one thing I have to say, Zach, about them shooting the threes, still 840 left. There's no need to go for threes. You don't need to force the comeback right now. No, especially if you're a 20% three-point shooting team. Maybe you got to keep going inside to Braden, who has 21 points right now. Ah! 
the Colts just missed out on the rim there. So that is a shot clock violation. Yassine's with the ball. And look at this press by the Colts. Valerie puts the ball in after a nice dish by Mr. Braden. Yeah, he had, a, he had an open shot at the rim there, but made the extra pass. So good ball movement by the Wolves. Good pass by Shallow to Yusuf. Looking for the end one. Just misses, but he will go to the charity stripe. Looks like the Algonquin bench did not agree with that foul. Again, didn't get the the drop there. Colts have not been getting those bounces. He gets the second. 62-55 for the Centennial Colts. We have seven minutes and 50 seconds remaining in this ball game. Yassint looking for Braden, but Armstrong gets his foot in the way. And Tayshawn Crawford will come in here for Josh and Pina. Braden is getting fronted. He can't get the ball right now. And that is end one by Galaza. If Braden can't get a touch on the ball, their next leading scorer is going to do the damage in the paint. And Galaza gets the end one. Yeah, absolutely. They've uh, The Colts have done a pretty good job of keeping Galaza off the board so far. He's been two of seven from the field. So not the traditional efficiency that we see from Algonquin's sixth man. But... Getting himself to the line there for a chance for three. Almost looked like a walk there on Yusuf. Missed three-point attempt by Makalalad. Lead down to five here. Makalalad not happy with the call. He gets called for a foul. Garcia very shifty with his dribbling. Went for the spin move there, but the refs say Maklala tripped him up. Yeah, it looks like the feet maybe just got tangled up there. And again, if you're the Colts, you are fine with that because Braden is very far from the paint. That's where you want him. Yeah, we'll see with the Colts seemingly focusing on Braden here in the fourth quarter, second half, kind of, to see where they go to get some offense. And yes, the ball is up high. And he gets another and one. That's Braden. He cleans up his miss. It's all about that box out. It's really tough once a player misses a layup and you both go for it, but you really have to focus on that box out and not let them get that second chance. Braden from the stripe, in and out. Seems like the luck is not going the Wolves way now. Great feed by McLeod and shallow from beyond the arc, Cash. 23 points for him. That's a season high for Shallow. Absolutely. Six made threes. He's also got eight rebounds and four assists, a block and a steal. So he's making his mark all over the floor for Centennial. And I think he's leading the game in falling, to the hard, far, falling on the hardwood also. You know, I don't have that stat right in front of me, but I think you're probably right. It's all good.
And Braden missing again. And see Zach in these close ball games when it's such, it comes down to like free throws. And as I mentioned, 49.4%. Forget about those free throws. How about these three pointers by Shallow? You gotta guard him from way outside. He's been knocking him down from near half court here today. And he gets the steal. Colts have numbers. He does it himself. Shallow running the break. The Colts run are all from points from Shallow. And their lead is at 10. Wow, what a game from Shallow. 28 points, and he is not done yet. Just leading by example. Didn't have a huge game yesterday, but he came out to party tonight. Absolutely. You know, Koban's been really good tonight, but who saw him stolen the show so far? Point guard, yes, but we might have to call Shallow a point guard after this performance. Absolutely, doing his best Steph Curry impersonation, impersonation here today. And he gets into the lane, and he's shown he's not scared to attack Braden, and Braden gets called for the foul. Yeah, both teams in the bonus here, or at least they will be in the next foul, so moving your feet important here towards the end of the game. Just in and out by McLeod. Definitely looked like that ball was out. The refs hold their whistle. Feels like a big possession here for the Wolves with five minutes remaining. And I don't think they need to force a three-pointer. They've been trying to hit these outside shots, but there's still a lot of time left. The perfect way to get back in a ball game is from the free throw line because the time is stopped. Absolutely. With five minutes left, anything can happen in basketball. You don't need to start jacking up threes to get yourself back in. And The Wolves have only shot 21% from three today, so it might behoove them to, to keep working it inside. And that is another miss from the line by the Wolves. Let's see if Galiza can trim the lead to eight. You hear the Colts crowd here trying to get under the skin of Galiza, but he silences them. Although Armstrong missed that fadeaway, I like that he is going at Braden. Yeah, that one looked like it was going to go in too. Just didn't quite get the roll. Armstrong with the rebound. Great defense there on Braden. He spins off one Colts defender and right into the help. Exactly what you want to do against those guys in the middle. And with an eight-point lead, this is what you want to do if you're the Colts. You want to use up the majority of the shot clock. The only thing is you want to get a shot off. Great defense by Crawford there. Looks like he might have gotten a touch on the, the other side of the rim there. Yassine enters. Exiting is Valerie for the Wolves. And on the other side, Indungala coming into the game. Makalalad headed to the bench here. Shallow gets the switch he wants. 
just misfires. And the stifling defense is disrupting the offense of the Wolverines by Yacint. A nice finish there on the feed from Braden. If the Colts are going to send two defenders at Braden, and he has obviously shown his ability to pass here today, you know, might be something the Wolves can look to to get the ball into him and then run some, some cuts off of him. And that is good defense by Braden. Contesting without fouling, and is seen for three. You see, he throws up the air ball, but the Wolverines still have possession. Norman for three. Yasint is everywhere. Another chance to trim this lead. Galazal in the lane, puts it in. Got a timeout here. They cut the lead down to four with that. The Colts going to look to maybe slow things down a little bit and get things back into their control after this timeout. And I can't stress it enough. The Wolverines looking for a lot of outside shots. There's a lot of time in this ball game. The Colts playing good defense, just missing a couple easy ones at the rim. But I do agree with what Coach Jackman has his team doing using up the majority of the shot clock you just want to get quality looks and also Braden has three fouls you want to consistently go at him see if you can cause a foul to arguably the best player on the Wolverines yeah he has been a force today he's got 24 points 13 rebounds three assists really been forcing the issue on both ends of the court, making things difficult for the Colts with his size and ability. The Colts head back to the floor. They will have possession. And same with the Wolverines. We'll see if Algonquin changes up their defensive plan here at all. Looks like they'll pick up full court. McElad is back in the game. He is here with the ball. Gets a screen from Armstrong. Armstrong thought he got fouled. And who is that? That is Shallow picking up the loose ball. And he'll head to the line for two. And like you mentioned, Braden, that'll be his fourth foul. So getting up there, something to watch down the stretch. In the right place at the right time is Shallow. And he is going to get rewarded with two shots from the line. A little short there. And the Colts sending in offensive rebounders. We haven't really seen that from them today. And Shallow makes the second. 29 for him. I'm sure he wants that 30 piece. I would. Always nice to score 30 points. The foul going the other way though. That'll send Garcia to the line. Garcia makes the first. Colts are up by four. We have 227 left in the game. You gotta get the boards. And that's what Shallow does. He gets boards, he drops dimes, he shoots threes. He's on double-double watch here as well. That was his ninth rebound. Excuse me, that was his tenth rebound. That is a double-double for Shallow. For three in the corner is Crawford, misses it. Armstrong, hands up. That is good defense. Travel, and that is good defense by the Colts. Forcing. The Wolves bench did not agree with that one. Colts up by four. 
highly contested matchup. Let's see if they go at Braden. Try to get him out the ball game. And that is Armstrong, Brampton's finest, with the three pointer in the face of Braden, putting the Colts up by seven. He hadn't made a three yet today, but you had to know that that one was going to go. And Braden just missed a gimme. Colts have the momentum here. Lead is at seven. Possible dagger here, Zach. You think they go shallow or Armstrong? Armstrong for three. And we got nobody because it is a turnover. An offensive foul called there. Turnovers at this part in the ball game can be very detrimental to a team. Absolutely, big possession for the Wolves here. The Wolves definitely need a score. Let's see if the Colts get after them on the defensive end. That's a really nice move by Garcia. Garcia Look, causing all kind of problems little today. Little stop and go. Absolutely, he's got eight, seven, and seven. Let's see if they start fouling the Wolverines. And Armstrong with the missed three. I know he just hit one, but I like going to the rim in that case. Are we gonna get some showtime? And Dongola maybe might have put the ball game away with that layup. Again, if you're the Wolverines, you're happy because the time is stopped. But the thing is, you gotta get, you gotta make your free throws. Absolutely, Braden. You know he was kind of shooting well at the beginning of the game. This season, he has not traditionally been the greatest of free throw shooters. Only shooting 33% from the line. So, although it is nice to be there, you gotta capitalize right now. And he'll make one of two, and that makes it a six-point game. The Wolves they have probably to got a now. foul here. They have to foul now. Very confused what is going on. I guess they're just going to accept defeat. And the Colts are going to remain unbeaten at home. They win 76-70. to 70. After a slow start, they really got after it in the second half. And how about the player of the game. I think it's pretty obvious it's Shallow. Who Sam Shallow, a season high, 29 points, chipping in, 11 rebounds. Just an outstanding game for the Colts guard. Also a season high in rebounds for him. Really giving the Colts a spark as this one was tight throughout. Shallow made a huge impact for them, especially when they were down making those threes. He made seven of them in the game to put the Colts ahead, which they didn't end up giving up that lead once Shallow gave it to them. And the Colts are 3-0 at home now. Their next game will be Friday the 18th against St. Lawrence. And they will be on a three-game road trip. They'll face St. Lawrence on the 18th. Loyalist on the 19th and at George Brown on the 25th. This is the momentum you want when you're going on a long road trip. I think Coach Jackman deserves a lot of credit, especially with, I'm sure, a pretty serious halftime speech to his team. Absolutely. We talked about the turnovers. Obviously, they had quite a few against La Cité last night. Quite a few in the first quarter here, and they really got the ball under control from the second quarter on in this one so I think obviously the emphasis on ball control and great defense for the Colts really coming through for them in this win against the solid Algonquin Wolves team and the Wolves are now one in four but it's all Colts they're able to get the win here and this is Colts basketball 
and you're watching it here live at OCAA. I'm Jordan Stoddard, your host. I've been I've been joined by my co-host Zach Warden. Our first game together, Zach. It was a pleasure. Hopefully, many more to come. Absolutely appreciate it, Jordan. Good stuff. We will catch y'all next time.